Well, hello, David Sabre. Hey, Randy. So, you know, we just installed this new sign. This is a Civil War marker uh, that's talking about the, uh, the occupation during the Civil War. Uh, the use of this house as a headquarters for both North and South at different points. And uh, also that Stonewall Jackson stayed here when he was looking for his mom's grave, which was on the hill up this way. Uh, the Civil War plays an incredibly important part in this place, as you know well know. Um, but the other thing is the age of this property. It's so old that this, this was here before anything else was here. This was the American frontier, the edge of it. Uh, the house was, was built as the as a stage stop and this as a matter of fact is the stage coach stop right here and during the uh the early early 1800s when this was the route west and this is one of the only routes west across the appalachians uh, people would uh, a, a horseman would go before let the uh let the innkeeper know that there was a stage coming and then uh the stage would get here and people would alight off on this stone platform. This, by the way, these are some uh, millstones, likely off of Mill Creek, which is just over, just over the hill over here. And we think now that the, the house was, you, you see, it's, it's log cabins underneath, but you see this, this clabbered siding. Well, we think it's possible that that siding might be from 1830 that old and that was milled on this mill creek not by these millstones but you know was associated with it that this would have been built you know by uh that early by this early early mill again this predates everything else around uh, nothing is as old historically as this structure let's go on in hey sounds good Come on. Something I want to note about the exterior here is uh, this porch, which in the National Register nomination is featured. Uh, this stairway interior under the porch, which leads up between the two sections of, the, of, this, of this tavern, is uh, unlike anything that's usually seen in these parts. I mean, it certainly exists other places, but here it's, it's, it's notable that it's here. If you can also, can you get the whole house in here? Are we looking at them? Do we have to back up? Well, let me back up just a little bit here. Something here I'd, I'd like to point out. Something I'd like to point out here is that the house is two two-story log cabins. There's one larger log cabin here between these two uh, chimneys. And then there's another narrower one over here. Oh, okay. Something we tried to determine over time is which which uh, section of the house might have been built first, because apparently one was and one was not. And if you'll see these two pieces of, uh, I don't know what the parts of the architecture of that is, or what that's called, but you'll see two pieces of woodwork on either side of the cabin with a curvilinear front. And these two, which have a flat front. Okay. Uh, we think that that may mean that again, that this might be the original cabin or this, but that's just, that's for historians to debate. Okay. Dave, what can you tell us about the, the other name of Tyree Tavern about being referred to as the halfway house. Yes, yes. Well, in, in a lot of cases, you'll see the house named both things, Tyree Tavern or halfway house. The Tyree Tavern often describes the house as the as a tavern owned by the, the Tyree family. But it was also called the halfway house. And the reason is that at some point during its, its, its being over this 200 year period, is it was a stop halfway between Lewisburg, West Virginia, Lewisburg, Virginia, which was the last settlement westward 
of Virginia, the Valley of Virginia, and the salt works at the Kanawha Salines, which it was very important. I mean, everybody needed salt, and the more salt you could get, the better. You had to have it for curing meat. There were all kinds of situations besides just table salt that you needed it. So the Salines was one of the, the most important salt works in Appalachia. And this was the, when you were headed from one place to another, this was often where you stayed. That's why we've, it's been called the halfway house as well. Right, thank you. And Randy, you might be able to say as much about some of this stuff. This is folk art from the, the, the period which the building was occupied. Right. Well, a good point. Um, this property has so much living history in it. Uh, it changed hands back and forth between the armies during the war. In 1861, the uh, uh, Chicago Gray Dragoons uh, used this as headquarters. And uh, at one time during the war, General Rosecrans was actually through here. And, uh, and of course, the Tyree and the Emboding family were Confederates. And uh, uh, so this traded hands uh, between the two forces from time to time, but it seems like the Union had the most uh, impact on the property. Mm. And as I understand it, soldiers would often carve their names and information and uh, do folk art on the walls of these occupied buildings. Yes, that's correct. Which, and here's another really... Uh, Okay, here we go. So, yeah, I'm, these fireplaces fascinate me. I mean, they were the centers of the room. This was the television set of that period. Now, of course, the wall-mounted television of that period. Um, here is a modern addition that we'll go through real quickly. This is the new kitchen, okay. which uh, I'm not sure when in the late 1900s it might have been built. But it's a, it's a it's a good kitchen and it's handy. Yeah. Okay. And um, we have a bathroom in here. Again, this is not part of the historical part of the house. Okay. And uh, you can see the geothermal heating unit back there. Okay. This this house is maintained at 51 degrees near let more or less uh, throughout the year. Actually, out back here, there's a well house. I'll let you take a. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't know anything about the well yet or how right, maybe if the water's still available through it, but it's standing. In a national historic landmark like this, that's, that's important. It's invaluable. Okay. Uh, this is, it appears to be the second half of the, the dining room. Again, a fantastic bit of, of carpentry here. Yes. Um, I've been told that some of the scarring that appears in this decor might, may well have been sword marks. But again, over more than 200 years, who can say? Yeah. Interesting. I think of this room as the main tavern room, but I have no way of knowing that. It's just uh, there's something homey about it to me and it seems to be one of the rooms that our guests here uh, as we've been showing the property have been very very interested in intended to gather in okay. uh, this I'll, I'll highlight that i saw the other day i don't know if you can see that an, an inscription by somebody named jamie from 1896 wow here's some more of the civil war, war era art possibly uh, carved by, inscribed by swords. This piece, of course, is uh, a treasure that people take pictures of again and again and again. The uniform of a, the, the soldier in this is from an earlier period, I believe. Randy, can you speak it, it to that? It certainly appears to be from the French Indian War period, and the date is uh, 1764, which is very early, but uh, the story behind this is just, it's a mystery. <laughs> uh, that's what keeps me coming back to this house, the mysteries and everything. Right. 
Now, this also, Randy, you may be able to speak uh, more about this, uh, any of the documentation that we see here. Yes. Uh, there's uh, lots and lots of uh, uh, photographs, daguerreotypes, and uh, things of the period from the M. Bowden and uh, Tyree and uh, 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 Dickinson family. And so there's still a lot of actual things here, and we've actually found uh, some Civil War letters written from down on the Kanawha River and uh, talking about the bushwhackers and so forth. Uh, so it was a very contentious area during the war. Now, the, the Imbodens and the, the Dickinsons that you mentioned were both early settlement families like the Tyrese. Uh, the uh, the, the um, Imbodens had Contentment, which is now a museum, about a mile down on the other end of town. Okay. And the, the, the Dickinsons owned the salt works we were talking about. They were major developers of the salt works and the Kanawha Valley. Okay. This oriel window appears, according to the uh, National Register, have to be from the Victorian period when people began to open their houses more to the outdoors. And certainly, it's a, it's a unlike the practical uh, timber that most of this building was built of. This is this is even a little more fancy. And of course, fanciness comes through in all this great woodwork and. Uh, here you can see that there, there is a paneling that matches this that normally would go over to this go over this space. It's in storage right now. I asked the seller not to necessarily put it back up so people could see the construction of the fireplace under it. And these amazing timbers were just as solid as can be because this is this is a, this is virgin timber harvested when. There was no one who walked this land. The forests were, were primeval. So these, these woods, this wood is incredible. We talked about having a, a person come in and dated it sometime to see how old these trees were when they were harvested. Right. And this piece right here, I just, um, I'm fascinated by it. Um, I don't know if it's... Uh, what can be said about it. Yeah, so. this piece uh, very well could be original to the place. It's uh, probably about 1830, 1840, and uh, down south they're called uh, Jackson Presses, and uh, they were very popular in uh, antebellum homes, and especially down south, to uh, put the dishware up top and then keep linens and different things in the uh, lower drawers. Great piece. <laughs> It's beautiful. Well, let's go into a newer part of the house, which is still very, very, very old. Um, this is often referred to as the dining room again, but again, these, these rooms, they had no, no official purpose. They were places to stay. Um, this may have been a part of the house that the tavern keepers uh, stayed in at one point. You'll note the curvature in the room. The a local legend is that the, the the building, this part of the building, had been built of a uh, a boat sailed up the Kanawha River to the Kanawha Falls and then dismantled and reused here. I don't know that that's the case at all. I think it's possible that things this building had settled. However, notice that this woodwork here was built and is solid uh, despite that settling. So the settling must have occurred early and then other structures and were built in here so it's a stable room it's just not what we're used to nowadays right. and this takes us back into the summer kitchen which is one of my favorite rooms because of the size of this fireplace now the purposes of summer kitchen was to have a kitchen which would not grow when it was hot inside the house you wanted your fire out away from the house so uh, this is out on the other side of the, the far end of the of the tavern and this is the, the largest lintel stone that, that, I, that i've ever seen i've never seen anything so massive that is incredible and this room has been restored uh, and renovated by the current owner using, in part, state tax credits and grants which are available 
you know, the federal government believes that if a building is on the national register, it deserves to stand forever, conceivably. And so they're willing to provide grants and tax credits. There are low interest loans, micro loans available for historic properties. And in that case, this uh, much of this stuff was uh, was, was fixed with with those funds. Okay. So are you ready to go upstairs? Yes. Come on. This is the back staircase. Um, it, I think it's pretty cool too. Come on. Let's see. Here. Perhaps a servant's quarters, we're not sure, but certainly more recently used as a bedroom. Okay. Uh, you can see the curvature in this room. Wow. The sway back room. Um, <laughs> far more back here. Um, as odd as it is, a lot of people do, do like this. I'm sure this is one of the more memorable rooms in the house. Even with that much curve, it seems to be solid. Yeah, yeah, it's a, that's the thing. Is it's it's very solid. In fact, some of the historians and and preservationists, the, the preservationists that we've spoken with, have said, you know, there's no practical reason to necessary to to lift this or to jack it up or to change it in any way. That certainly can be done, but again, there is a historicity to this. Um, but it's a solid. It's a solid uh, construction. It's just, it's lasted for more than a hundred years. Wow. Now we're going back into the original part of the house. Turn on some lights up here. Thank you. Again, the, the beams up here are, are fantastic, and it's, uh, again, it speaks to the great age of this house, which is, which as I said, the oldest thing for miles around. You can see the upper star part of the... Um, oh, well, that's the, the fireplace. Mm -hmm. Here we have an upstairs bedroom, a later remodel. Uh, yeah, an upstairs bedroom, a later remodel. Bathroom, sorry. A central room with the staircase out. This is the staircase that we looked at in the porch earlier. Now this would lend itself to it being a, a, a hotel of the day with the divided staircase, correct? Yes, yes, yes. This would, this would be a hotel uh, situation. People, guests would be able to come in, go out, without disturbing the, the, the innkeeper's family who lived on the other side. At least at some point, we surmise. Again, there, we don't know, there's so much we don't know, but there's a lot that we're discovering now thanks to the internet. Documents that hadn't been available for are coming together. And this is a favorite room. I think it's, it's a quiet room. And I think it's, it's kind of far away from the bluster of the rest of the house. So uh, guests who come here to, to tour the house enjoy it quite a lot. So what what else can I tell you, Randy? Um, how many? How much property does the house set on? Uh, it's on, a, on about two acres. I uh, doubt you can see through the window, but there's a large yard to the the back of the property, okay. and which um, and part of that, the geothermal field is in a little bit of that. Okay. Uh, then you have a good size. I don't know what you can see out here. Certainly because of the. These historical 
glass windows. Yeah. But that's the front, the front and the old Midland Trail. So uh, Colonel Lewis and his militia on the way to Point Pleasant in uh, 1770, I think it was, some more, they would have very likely passed right in front of this property. Well, according to the, the late historian Shirley Donnelly, he believes that Lewis and his troops camp right here where this is. Um, he had in one document referred to this as being uh, the site of the uh, um, Mountain Cove Post Office and that is apparently where they had settled, so just put it, or where they camped, so just putting two, two, two together. But again, there were thousands of troops, and what that was was Lewis was defending, on behalf of Virginia, the frontier on Ohio uh, against the Shawnee and some other Indian groups, and sometimes that's called the first battle of the American Revolution, but it certainly it was the first major engagement with the colony against um, another Indian nation. Fascinating. So at that time, it would actually been part of the great, uh, the British Empire. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's when you when you see this building, you you realize you know this is only built about thirty years after after Britain got out. Wow. Fascinating. Uh, Dave, I think there's some uh, the inscription on the front porch on that uh, door where the soldiers at that we didn't get. Let's outside. go take a look. Okay. They were telling me out front that there um, there's going to be a town festival this weekend, so I guess I'll come back on Saturday to okay. open the house. Up. All right. This always captures people's attention. Is this uh, piece of work exists from that period when the Chicago Drave, Drave Dragoons were, were stationed here. And Randy, I have to admit, I do not know much about that history, though I know you do. Well, there's a quite interesting history uh, recorded about the uh, Dragoons and uh, they uh, spent considerable time here and uh, several of them of uh, their uh, army are listed on fold three. So a very interesting connection to think that, that these uh, folks were all the way from Chicago, Illinois, back at the time before any rail line or, you know, that would have been an enormous amount of uh, land to travel over to get to Anstead, Virginia. Absolutely. Dave, one other thing, and I'll point out mm -hmm. to our folks as we're looking at the old James River Canal Turnpike, the Midland Trail, this uh, huge sycamore tree. Uh, I did a uh, estimate on it last year uh, based upon its uh, circumference, and uh, the internet site believes that this tree is about 460 years old. Wow, that's pretty that's incredible. Isn't far it? older than I expected. Yeah, but it shows up on any early illustration of this house or any ph photograph. It's it's there, obviously. Right. And it was big in the yeah. early twenties. I've seen. It. Okay. Well, great. Well, all right. Great. Thanks very much, Randy. Thank you. And uh, Dave, you are the listing realtor on this. Can you tell us anything about the price and where they might find more information? Uh, sure. Well, sure. It's it's two hundred thousand dollars. Um, and it is available, you can find it uh, in many places online, but on foxfirenation.com. That's where you'll find most of the, the information and just type it Tyree Tavern Foxfire. That often gets me there. But again, if you just go to foxfirenation.com, you'll find it. All right. Great, Dave. Thanks for the tour. Well, thanks very much, Randy. See you soon. My pleasure.